Welcome to the Becoming You Show with me, your host, Leah Rowling. Do you believe you are capable of choosing your future? Sometimes it takes just one person to believe in you, or you to believe in yourself. If you find yourself continuing to say, someday I will take better care of myself, only to continue living the same day over and over and over again, then you, my friend, are in the right place. I am your biggest cheerleader, inspiring you to become you, on purpose and with intention. Are you ready to create a life you love? I'm excited to share with you some big ideas that you can use today to inspire, impact, and influence your life and everyone in it. The Becoming You show starts now. Hello, my friends. How are you? How was your week? Did uh, you focus on your priorities? Did you move the needle forward on your projects? Did you delegate? Did you uphold your boundaries? Did you take time for self-care and whatever that looks like for you? Did you connect in meaningful ways with people? Were you mindful of the beautiful moments in your day and in your week? Did you do what you said you were going to do? Because that's the topic of the show today. Doing what we say we're going to do. So, Think back over the last week. Did you do what you said you were going to do? Or think about something that you've been wanting to do and you've just kind of been dismissing. And I'm hoping that the ideas that I offer you today on why it is that we do that will help you get momentum to finally doing that thing. So when you look back, over the week? Did you get to bed when you wanted? Did you get to the gym? Did you drink more water? Did you take your supplements? Did you meditate? Did you journal? And if so, awesome. Have you congratulated yourself? Have you pat yourself on the back, right? Have you appreciated you? And if not, why? I'm going to share with you three components of behavioral health and how not being fit in these areas hinder our ability to follow through on what we say. I think it all comes down to how healthy our behaviors are in these areas. So what does it even mean to be behaviorally fit? What are the components of behavioral health? How do we need to think? How do we need to feel? What do we need to do in order to have the behaviors we want? These are all great questions. These will help us understand and identify why we don't do what we say we're going to do. So before we dig in, I want to share with you why this subject is so near and dear to my heart. I have been a coach for almost three decades now in some way or another. I started early on uh, years ago being a fitness coach, a weight loss coach, a marathon coach. I owned my own gym. Fitness and health is something that I'm very passionate about. But what kept me up at night is why people, this question, why people don't do what they say they're going to do. I I give them a plan so they know exactly what to do. Like I give them an A and I give them a B and I tell them exactly the steps uh, specific to them and their goals. And yet only 50% actually achieve the success that they wanted, the success that they paid me to accomplish. Why is that? Why why don't people do what they know? And that question kept me up at night. 
And it is a big reason as to why I pursued additional education in quantum medicine and psychology and sociology and, and neuroscience and behavioral science. I really wanted to understand why we behave the way that we do. And what I learned was fascinating. People don't do what they know. They don't. I've said it multiple times on the podcast. If, if we did what we know, we would have done it already. We're a Google, YouTube, TikTok search away from knowing how to do anything and what to do. So it's not what we know, it's who we are as a state of being, a thinking, feeling state of being. And if you're new to me, right? There's a few things that we need to know. And if you've been with me for a while, then you already know. But we rarely do anything we don't feel like. I mean, people for sure have accomplished some great progress by willpower. But as soon as willpower runs out, we are back to square one, not feeling like it, and so not doing it. So how do we get to feel like it? Well, as you know, our thoughts create our feelings. And so the first component of behavioral health is thought management. We must understand why we think what we think. We must manage our thoughts in a way that serve us, that empower us, that orient the way for us. Essentially, we have to hack our brain. We have to put protocols and rules around our brain. Our brains can be incredibly misguided. Our brains can offer us thoughts like, why does it matter? Why should I start now? I won't be successful. It offers up, seriously, who are you trying to do this again? It offers up, who do you think you are? It offers up, why do you bother? Every time you start this, try this, you end up not going through and following through with it. You end up not doing what you say you're going to do. And your brain will give you every single excuse to not do what you know, what you say, because our thoughts have gone unmanaged. So we need to be on to ourselves. We also have to be on to our I am statements. How often do we identify as something that does not align with what we actually want? We, we say we want to get in shape, and yet we offer up, I am not fit. We offer up that we want to lose weight, but we offer up, I am not ever going to lose weight. I have not ever been capable of losing weight. We want to stop working so much and have a better work-life balance, but we say, I'm a workaholic. We want to feel less frantic about our schedule and less overwhelmed, but we say, I am so overwhelmed. I have so much to do. And then guess what happens? We write our identities. We become that person that, that can't, won't be fit, that can't, won't lose weight that is a workaholic and overwhelmed by all of the stuff they have to do. And when you find yourself suggesting that you can't do something, I want you to consider that it has nothing to do with you not being able to do it. It has everything to do with you not wanting to, so you won't. We need to own this distinction. I truly believe that if it is in your mind, in your heart, as a want, it is absolutely something you can do, something you can figure out, something that you can take steps to accomplish. You not doing it has to do with what you think is possible. What we think matters, our mindsets matter, whether we think in lack or in enough, is important. Whether we think negative or positive is important. Whether we operate from a fixed way of thinking or a growth way of thinking is vital to how we show up in our life. Thought management is really brain management and we have to care about it. 
If you're tired of going through the motions of your day, if you're tired of letting yourself down day after day, telling yourself that you're going to do it, today is the day I'm starting on Monday. Monday is not going to be different if you're not different. Monday comes and it goes. Monday isn't what needs to be different. It's you. We can't accept change or accept change if we are not willing to choose change. We have to be the change that we want, which means that we have to start thinking different. We have to start redirecting our thoughts in a way that creates a new identity. Did you know you could just choose who you want to be? You can. It doesn't matter who you've been. It doesn't matter what people say. You don't need permission or validation. It doesn't mean, it doesn't matter if you've never been athletic. It doesn't matter if you've always been late. It doesn't matter if you've never liked eating healthy foods. It doesn't matter if you've never drank enough water or if you get enough sleep. It doesn't matter if you've never valued self-care or if you've always thought it to be selfish. It doesn't matter what you have thought about anything ever before in the past. None of it matters because there are absolutely zero possibilities there. So if you don't like aspects of your life right now, heck, if you don't like your life right now, make today be the day that you stop listening to your inner critic. It is a liar anyway. You stop operating from past programming designed and coded to keep you small, to keep you thinking that you are on route, that you are heading in the right direction. Heck, you may even find proof that north is the right way to go. But an unchecked brain is a faulty GPS system. It will have you heading north for miles and miles and miles before you realize that you should have been going southeast. So how do we know that we should have been heading southeast all along? You don't. You don't know. You feel. You feel the truth for who it is that you are. I know, I get it. It doesn't seem like feeling has anything to do with our behaviors and taking that right next action, but it has everything to do with it. When you feel for the truth of who it is that you are, you will know where to go. When you stop listening to your head, your supposed knowing, and feel for the truth of who it is that you are and what it is, you will be guided by your intuition and not your inner ego. When you rely on your intuition, you better know what to do. You honor your values. You stay true to your boundaries. You listen to the ambitions in your heart and you are guided by this underlying knowing that as an adult, you don't need permission. You don't need validation. You don't need accolades. You don't need any of that. What you need is to feel you. The only permission you need is from yourself. The only validation you need is from yourself. The only accolades you need are from yourself. Now, yeah, sure. Is it nice to have it from others? Sure, okay. But to what end? To what end do you need this validation and this permission? Broken boundaries? People-pleasing? Resisting respect? When you let others tear you down, make you feel small, you are resisting the very respect that you are owed. When you allow for others to treat you badly, to dishonor you, to be rude, to indulge on your behalf, you are resisting the respect that you deserve. I know this too well. When we have created a pretend life, a life scared to be and feel like ourselves because we don't want to be alone, because we don't want to be left, because we don't want people to not like us. All we end up doing is not liking us, ignoring us, forgetting ourselves. And I don't know about you, but when I don't like someone, I'm not spending time listening to them, asking them how they feel getting their buy-in on the decisions that I want for my life. 
I don't trust them. And if I don't trust them, I'm not going to do what they tell me to do. And there lies the problem. Why do we not do what we say? Because most of us are not going to do anything that we are told to do by someone we don't like, someone that we don't know, somebody that we don't trust. Want to start doing what you say? Start paying attention to how you feel. Start giving a damn about who you are and what you want in life. Stop caring more about what other people think about you and more about what you think about you. Stop asking for permission or waiting for it from someone that is never either going to, one, give it to you or give it to you in a manner in which you want. Stop needing validation from other people. Their validation of you means nothing if you need it for your own valuation. You can't take their validation in hopes that will offset your lack of valuation. Do you see that? I was talking with a client about this exact thing last week. We were talking about minimizing what we charge, aka our value, so that we could charge less and that would be good news for them. And then my client would receive good feedback. Interesting, right? Really, basically, what she was saying is, let's devalue ourselves in hopes that it will make someone feel good so that we could feel good. Crazy, because we don't feel good, we feel terrible if we are really listening. And who knows if they actually feel good about the lessened price? We make a lot of assumptions that people will be happier with us if we devalue our service. Maybe they will be happier with us. Maybe they won't, but I promise you, you won't. And if we're really being honest, they aren't even happier with us. They aren't. They are not buying us. They are exchanging money for the service we provide. So they're not happy with us. If they are happy with us, it's because of their own thought management, how they think about things. You, my client, doesn't make them feel anything. So, and I say this loving to her, we have to stop giving ourselves the credit for what other people do or don't do. For what other people think about us or not think about us. We have to stop giving others the credit. We need to start giving ourselves credit for what we do and who we are. We need to start paying attention to what we truly, truly, truly want, what we value and our worth and live from a place of integrity, of honor and taking care of what matters, of what we love. Think about that one. People don't take care of things they don't care about. They don't take care of things they don't like or love. Maybe you not doing what you say you're going to do has less to do with motivation and ambition and or drive, it might have more to do about knowing and caring and loving you. So the third component of behavioral health is a measure of behavioral fitness is priority planning. I know, I know, I'm sure you have heard of this before, but hang tight. I thought I had a plan. I did have a plan, but that plan was not mine. And it was for someone else. If I were to look at your planner, would I know what was important to you? Would I see where you are working on your competencies, your creations, or would I see meeting after meeting after meeting for everyone else? Would I know your goals? Would I know the projects that you are working on this month? Would I know the tasks that move these projects forward? Would I know the people that you need to reach out to? Would I know the people that you are waiting on? Would I see your goals outside a vision board that you put together in January, but you haven't looked at since? Do you know where you're going? What is the destination? And I, I'm not asking these questions in judgment. Trust me. 
These, these were some of the first questions my first coach asked of me when I told him there's so much to do and not enough time. I didn't have a time issue. Nobody really does. Time just is. Whether or not you are using it wisely towards the direction of your dreams is the conversation. And that requires planning. I used to think that I was super organized, productive, and efficient until I realized I was not. I realized I was busy and I did busy well. I technically got a lot of things done, yes, checked and crossed off, but nothing that moved the needle forward in my life. Just tasks that made me look like I was accomplishing things. Tasks in crisis, tasks in consumption, but, but not much in creation, which left me always thinking that there had to be more to all of it. What was it all for? This checking off boxes and crossing off to-do lists. Why don't we do what we say we're going to do? Well, because we offer up that we're too busy, that we don't have enough time, that there's too much to do. But all of that is just an excuse. It is rare that I can't find people at minimum five to 10 hours a week. By planning, prioritizing, blocking time, creating routines, cultivating habits that support a life you love, one that you're proud of because you are finally doing what you say. Gosh, that's the stuff of integrity, right? Nobody is too busy to find time to work out, to eat better, to take supplements, to meditate, to spend quality time with the people that they love, to get more sleep. It's not a busy issue. It's a priority issue. It's a planning issue. And this goes back to thought management. If we think we are too busy, we will be. This goes back to feeling who you are, knowing who you are and what you value. If you value health and relationships and family and service, how are you prioritizing those values? Would I know what you value if I were to look at your calendar? Would you know? We don't do what we say we're going to do because it's not scheduled. Because we have not made it a priority. And if you haven't, can you just take a minute to journal and reflect on some of the I am thoughts that you keep, where you are sabotaging your follow through by identifying as someone that you used to be, not someone you choose to be? Where are you guided by your head versus your heart? I don't believe our values are from our head. I believe that they are from our hearts. And in order to know if we are going in the right direction, to make sure that we, sh if we're supposed to be going Southeast, if we're going North, we must trust and listen to how we feel at least as much of the time, if not more than what we think. Are you priority planning? Are you planning the things you say you want to do. If you say, I will start on Monday, is it on your calendar for Monday? Have you blocked time for it? If you haven't, I can almost assure you, you won't do it. If you've not been doing it, if it's not yet a habit, we must focus on these three components of behavioral health in order to make the habit stick. Make it unconscious until it becomes something that is so automatic. And in order to do so, we have to understand and manage our brain. We must operate from our feelings in tune with our values. What matters really matters. And then we have to plan it. All great behaviors require these three components. Here is to doing what we say we're going to do. I can't wait to see your behaviors that you will start and stop and continue. And, you know, here's to your behavioral health. And if you want to work more on these behaviors and habits, if you want a reset and a redesign of your life, I want to invite you to come to Houston next month. 
I'm so excited. We are doing a reset, renew, and re design retreat. And I'm tweaking the agenda now for it. And it's going to be a super intense two days of resetting over the past two years, reframing the thoughts that sabotage us, that get in the way of the possibility of what is available, to really get in touch with our emotions, to redesign our life by putting and creating habits that will give us more energy, that will give us a sense of aliveness, a sense of connection, a sense of meaning, a sense of purpose. And so if any of that sounds like a super awesome, fun time, check our retreat out at our website at www.leahrolling.com. Okay, my friends, let's work this week to manage our thoughts, to listen to our intuition, the compass of our life, and plan our priorities as such. See you next week. Take care. Bye. You have been listening to the Becoming You Show with me, your host, Leah Rowling, where I share big ideas to inspire, impact, and influence your life. Tune in every Friday at 11 Central on TransformationTalkRadio.com for your morning cup of coffee, the hug you never want to end, and that inspirational message that you felt was written just for you. Each show is inspiring you to become you with purpose and intention. For more information or to connect with me, visit www.LeahRowling.com.